All right, so let's look at the concept of percentage yield. So I'm going to first jump to the equation because uh, the concept of percentage yield is my, something you may not have come across yet. And but you may have come across the concept of percentage, right? So percentage is usually something divided by something else multiplied by 100. So you know that. And yield meaning is how much do you get? How much did you yield from something? And in this case, it's how much did we yield from a reaction? So what, an, what percentage yield is, is how much do we get from a given chemical reaction, knowing that all reactions don't necessarily give us 100% of what we expect to get from them. Now, the best analogy that um, uh, there, there probably is, is you, we've all popped popcorn before. So if you take your little kernels of popcorn, so let's say how many, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. I don't know how to count 9, no, 10. <laughs> so there's 10, so like 10 kernels of, 10, 10 popcorn kernels, right? Oopsies. And we apply some heat to them, right? What's going to happen? They're going to pop. You expect to get popcorn, right? But now you always know. Do all of these popcorn kernels pop? No. Some of them pop, right? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then we have one, two, three. There's three of them that remain unpopped. So what does that mean? What does this number seven out of the 10 that actually popped and became popcorn? What does that mean? Can I express this as 70%, right? I can say 70% of my popcorn per kernels popped. Yes, I can. And that is what percentage yield is. It means that 70% of my product, um, in, potentially, I could have gotten how many? I could have gotten 10, right? That's how much I theoretically could have gotten. Right, notice I could have theoretically gotten 10 pop pieces of popcorn. How much did I actually get? What is my then actual or my experimental yield? It's seven. All right. And then, in other words, if I multiply this by 100 and I just say, I call this thing that I calculate a percentage yield. That is what percentage yield is. Okay, it is the percentage that I get from the expected value. So theoretically, what I could have gotten, or the, what I actually got it from, but divided by what I theoretically could have gotten, multiplied by 100. Okay, so now let's translate this into moles. So now you can see. So like this, the right hand side is my popped popcorn kernels, the left hand side is my unpopped popcorn kernels. Now let's try to, to connect those concepts. So this example says aspirin can be made in the laboratory by the following reaction. And there's, there's some stuff. All right. So it's something plus something gives something and something. It says, what is the percentage yield of the reaction if 6.26 gram of aspirin, so this, this side is the aspirin, 2.26 gram of aspirin, is obtained from 14.4 gram of salicylic acid. 14.4 gram. All right. So do you notice they tell us you've only gotten, or you got 6.26 gram of aspirin and you put in the system 14.4 gram of salicylic acid and more than enough, it says excess, right? Excess, so there's excess. So what does that make the salicylic acid? It's our limiting reagent. So what does the limiting reagent do? It dictates...
dictates the number of moles of aspirin that can form. So what are we going to do now? We want to find out how much aspirin could have formed from the amount of salicylic acid that we had because this is how much actually formed. This is our actual yield. So meaning they gave us, they told us, this is how much actually formed. We put into the system 14.4 grams salicylic acid. So that will give us the amount from that we can determine how much theoretically aspirin could have formed, right? That 14.4 gram is the 10 kernels. We put in so many kernels. So in principle, how many popcorn could have formed? So how much aspirin could have formed? We need to determine this bottom number here. Okay, so that's our question for here. So let's write it out. How much aspirin pirin can we pure Kali get from fourteen point four gram. I'm just going to call it SA. All right, salicylic acid. Why? Because I'm lazy. Okay. So, how much aspirin can we theoretically get from that? So the question is, how do we calculate? Um, the mass of aspirin expected from 14.4 grams salicylic acid. Can we directly calculate the mass? No. We first need to go to number of mole. And from the number of mole, we can connect that using the chemical equation. All of these are luckily one to one to one to one. That's the ratios. So if we have the number of mole, we know the number of mole of aspirin that forms and uh, could form. And then we can get the mass of aspirin that is expected. So our first step is to get the number of mole of this thing's formula C6, C7H6O3. Um, and that should be quite straightforward. So that's 14.44 gram. Once again, call it salicylic acid multiplied or divided by the molar mass. In other words, unit conversion time, so there's one mole of salicylic acid per, and the molar mass of salicylic acid is 138.1 gram. All right, per mole, so, right, this is the same as dividing by your molar mass. So whatever method works for you, and from this, you should get a value of 0 0.1043, whatever, mole C7H603. Good. Okay, now that we have the number of moles, we know from our chemical equation that one mole C7H603 reacts or produces one mole of aspirin, one mole C9, oh, C9, H8O4. When it's one to one, you can just immediately write it. I don't think you need to write out the entire thing, right? So then it means C9H8O4 will be the same value, 1.043 mole C9H804. But this is, let's make a note here for ourselves, this is the maximum or the theoretical amount, or maximum amount, right? Because this is 
how much aspirin can we theoretically get from 14.4 grams salicylic acid? That's what we've been calculating. So this gives us the maximum amount of aspirin. That's the number of moles. So now we can get the mass C9H8O4. Let's make that a bit better. So we have the number of moles. So that means we have mass multiplied by molar mass. So okay, I'm just going to, for the sake of my space, I'm going to take the remember, so that's there. And it's molar mass. You should get a value of 180. Yeah, 180.2 gram per mole. It's the only time I'm going to cheat now, just this, because I want the concept is more important here. Yeah? So that is going to give you 18.79 gram. Check your textbook. They do it all in one step. We're using the unit conversion method. That's perfectly fine as well. If you're comfortable doing it like that, then that's it. I've been using the unit conversion method up to now. I thought I'd mix it up a bit because, yeah, show you all the methods. Um, we prefer the unit conversion method, but I mean, this one sometimes is you're more, you're more um, comfortable with this. But anyway, right, so that gives us so much as per is theoretically, just call it theoretically possible, right? So can you see that this is this value 18.79 is much more than this 6.26 so in principle if we used 14.4 gram we would expect a much much more aspirin to form but we only got 6.26 gram it's exactly the same here right we got we had 10 kernels we heated them but then only seven of them popped in this case, actually, it would have only probably been if three kernels popped. Okay. Because you see it's roughly about a third. It's like six divided by 18, so it's a third. So that means our last step is to calculate the percentage yield. So that means our percentage yield is equal to yield divided by theoretical yield multiplied by 100 or 100 percent and our actual yield is the 6.26 gram We have here 18.2979 gram multiplied by 100. And that gives us 33.3% yield. All right. And this is not unusual for reactions not to go to completion. Um, there's sometimes uh, byproducts that are produced or there's loss of products during purification steps or filtration. Um, so that, those are the reasons that our reactions often have yields less than a hundred percent. Um, but yeah, this basically is the idea that you are able to connect where, which masses go and you have an idea of what does percentage yield actually mean. Okay, so it's the actual yield divided by the theoretical yield, and the theoretical yield is dictated by some of the something in the reagents. Okay, uh, yeah, thank you for watching. I, I hope this was helpful.